Kia ora. I'm John Tucker, Principal of Kerry Theological College, and I'm here with the most recent addition to the Kerry community. It's a real pleasure to, just last week, welcome Dr. Krista McCurland as uh, the lecturer in systematic theology here at Kerry now. Krista, welcome to Aotearoa and welcome to Kerry. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Oh, it's so good to be here. Yeah. Now, you've come to us from St the University of St Andrews in Scotland. Mm -hmm. But you don't sound Scottish. You're not from Scotland. Tell us a little bit about your background. Where are you from? Yeah, I'd love to. So um, I was originally born in Georgia uh, in the United States. That's where I really grew up. Most of my uh, early years were spent there and even did my undergraduate degrees uh, there at the University of Georgia. Um, my dad's a minister in a large Southern Baptist church. So we, uh, I got to have a great uh, growing up experience uh, just uh, yeah, in the in the in the South, uh, in in the U.S., and then moved to California to do a couple of master's degrees um, in biblical studies and in systematic theology um, before going to Scotland. So that's why you don't hear the accent. You will hear a Southern accent if I'm angry or hungry. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not either yeah. of those things right now. Yeah, great. Um, now, you're the supervisor for your doctoral work at St Andrews was Professor Alan Torrance, mm -hmm. one of the leading theologians, systematic theologians in the world today. And he writes this about you. He says, Krista is an outstanding theologian, a Christian theologian. Her integration of biblical scholarship, theology, and philosophy showcases the future direction for constructive Christian theology. This is that's very impressive, and, and it's, it's certainly um, to my ears is very exciting because at Kerry we're absolutely committed to an integrative approach to theology. Can you describe for us your understanding of of, of integrative theology? You know, how is this hmm. such a valuable way of under, of approaching theological research and inquiry? Hmm. Well, it's funny. It actually just is woven throughout my own story. So as I mentioned, growing up in Georgia, um, I went to a state school there, the University of Georgia. And there I did philosophy and women's studies as my undergraduate degrees. And when I was in philosophy, um, I just remember I'd actually been in a, in a different degree program and I had to take a philosophy course as part of my humanities requirement. And I went in and I sat in this course and the course was called Logic and Critical Thinking which could have been very, very dry, but I sat in that course and, and the woman who was teaching it uh, just made a whole new world of, of how we think uh, come alive to me. And it was really through this idea of logic, of thinking critically about uh, just common things that we assume, uh, things we presuppose. Um, and, and she wasn't coming from any type of theistic background, but I was able to take those skills and bring them into my, my faith journey. And especially as I was moving away from home for the first time after being a preacher's kid for 18 years, to be in a space where my faith was really becoming my own and I was thinking about it in a more robust way, uh, that gave me just this bearing for thinking philosophically about things I'd grown up with of theological import, um, about who Jesus is and about how I relate to Jesus and how do we act in the world, big really theological questions um, that philosophy was helping me think about. And then also along that same journey um, as being a woman in the South and a woman in a, a more conservative Christian context, um, I didn't really have good role models of women teaching, leading, praying, baptizing, serving the Lord's Supper, passing an offering plate. I didn't have any visible role models of women doing that in a mixed gender context. and so. Um, when I was studying philosophy, it was also giving me some tools to start to think a bit more critically uh, about things I'd inherited, uh, paradigms that I found uh, that I assumed were just patently true and that I'd never questioned before. And so probably one of the biggest things uh, that was inspirational for me was the idea of the scriptures and the interpretation of the scriptures actually being two different things, that they were not one and the same. And as great as the preaching was on Sunday mornings, Preaching is still, it's an interpretation of the pastor to a larger community, at least in the tradition I had grown up in. But I didn't know that really until I was doing this degree in philosophy. And so it was along uh, those same, in that same uh, vein that I was really starting to question, well, what do I do with the logic of how the Spirit seems to have gifted me to teach and to preach and the logic of the call that I feel in my life? Um, to especially equip young people to know more fully who they are in Christ. So how does that comport with what I'm reading in the text and what I'm hearing taught from the text? Um, 
And so what it ended up doing was it was pushing me to need to know more about the scriptures themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so biblical studies became really a natural segue mm -hmm. from the questions I was asking philosophically of my faith. And so learning Greek and Hebrew, Slightly, mm -hmm. uh, I am barely literate, um, and I know how to use some good software, um, but I have good biblical studies friends that I can ask good questions of. But really starting to think through, <clears throat> has what I've been taught the only way of thinking about these texts? And so going into biblical studies uh, and doing Bible exposition as my first master's degree really helped me bring mm -hmm. the logic and critical thinking into now thinking about scripture and what does it say. Well then naturally from that then actually it propelled into my first love which is theology even though it was the last degree that I ended up doing before my doctorate. And so my master's in systematic theology was in um, looking at image of God and, and the role of the body uh, as my thesis in that program. And so I was bringing all of those elements um, and being a woman I think colored also how I was thinking about those things because um, I just had to think about them um, earlier than a lot of my peers um, did. So it's a long story but really for me integration it's not just about oh here's a question we want to ask and let's just answer it from different vantage points. For me it really it, it's woven throughout my story of, of the mm. ways of knowing and how those things come together mm. uh, really to undergird conviction mm. in a lot of ways. Mm. I think it's wonderful. I think so um, often we live disintegrated lives mm. um, in which we we uh, we treat the scriptures uh, as, as somehow completely quarantined from the experience that we that we have um, the you know the, the tradition or the wisdom that we've received from the past mm. and integrating those mm. with scripture as our norming norm yes. and all of that is a really really important um, activity and um, you know it's crucial to, for Christian life and leadership mm. today so I'm, I'm thrilled that you're here and that you're going to be teaching um, our students to do that well uh, can I just tell us what are you researching at the moment yeah, yeah so Currently, I'm working on my book project, um, so that's taking my, my thesis and turning it into uh, a monograph, so I'm trying to sharpen some of the thoughts yeah. there. Um, but the idea basically from that, again, trying to bring those three disciplines into conversation is by looking at the scriptures and thinking through what does it mean to be human, um, how has God crafted us, and all, often with a, a telos, an end point in mind, um, and that end point, uh, my cards on the table, is going to be Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We're meant to be conformed into his image and likeness mm -hmm. while maintaining our particularity. That's another whole conversation, but really the role of the spirit in that process. And so uh, my thesis was really focusing on the idea of need and need as um, opposed to, but often with overlap with the concept of desire. Um, so sometimes we need what we don't desire and sometimes we desire what we don't need. So it is important to distinguish those concepts, um, but also uh, sometimes they have some powerful overlap. And so a lot of what that project was looking at and what I'll be continuing on in this year and trying to make that more accessible in a written format um, is how do we understand our need for God? And what that means, what's cool about the concept of need is need doesn't necessarily mean that once it's satisfied, it finishes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you need water as an mm -hmm, organic mm -hmm, creature, mm -hmm. <laughs> you still need it even mm. as you're drinking water. Mm. And so the same idea that's different from desire. So often desire, it's indicating a lack. Mm. So once the desire is met, the desire goes away. Need actually is distinct in mm. that way. Mm. And so once the need is met, well, the need persists. Mm. So we can continue to need our relationship, mm. uh, not just a relationship with God, but a fulfillment of that relationship mm. without ever seeing it come to a point of stagnation, mm. um, but it's ever increasing and ever growing. And so it's very much connected to human flourishing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because that's also critical to the kind of understanding of need that I'm working with. Yeah. So that's the current project. I do hope to see that interface more even with the social sciences yeah. Yeah. and some of the things that mm. those um, areas of inquiry are yielding for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. But definitely right now wanting my foundational core um, to really be the, the scriptures and, and kind of thinking through how do those work um, through a philosophical gridiron to right. yield some very interesting theological conclusions. Yeah. yeah. Which, of course, will make an appearance, I'm sure, in um, in your teaching this year. Yes. This semester, you're teaching 
teaching a course on humanity and hope. Mm. What does it mean to be human? What's God made us to be and become? Mm. What is the hope of, of human life? Um, and Christology mm. and an introduction to theology. Yes. Um, what, what excites you about these courses? Oh I mean, if, if, um, if, if someone out there was thinking uh, that they want to follow Jesus mm. um, faithfully and be uh, an effective witness for him and for the gospel today, mm -hmm. um, in our world, how are these courses um, relevant and, and yeah. helpful? So good, John. So when I got my course load, I just felt like a kid in a candy shop because all these things are so exciting to me because they really do bear out. It's not just thinking abstractly about uh, doctrines of God that have no bearing in life today. I think theology applied, it's, it's the bread and butter of the gospel. Um, thinking through, I mean, I believe that God has, has designed us to flourish and put us in context, even though we are in a really fallen, icky space in mm. cosmic history, mm -hmm. Christ has come in to redeem us and to restore us to who we were truly meant to be from the get-go. Mm. And so humanity and hope is a chance for us to explore that in greater detail. What does it mean to be human? What were we intended for? How do we access that in the here and now? And what are we looking forward to? And so it is a hopeful existence mm. at mm. its very core. Mm. And then Christology is just going to build upon that. Even though you don't have to have taken humanity and hope to do Christology, they will speak into one another because, as I said earlier, if Christ is the end for which we are oriented, the one, the end for which we are intended, the more we understand Christology, the more we're actually going to understand humanity. It's also the more we're going to, uh, the more we will understand Trinity mm -hmm. and ways we are not like God mm -hmm. as we look at Christ, mm -hmm. but also the ways that we are and the ways that we are invited into what God has always intended for us. Mm -hmm. And then thinking theologically is going to hopefully situate humanity and hope, Christology, these big doctrinal topics that we're talking about, it's going to situate that in a much broader perspective of what are the big doctrines, how have they move throughout um, church history, and then most importantly to me is how do they affect everyday life. Yeah. Um, and so if, if God is the one who has made us and who has intended us for great things and great purposes and invited us into that life with Him, mm -hmm we're going to be able to know what it looks like mm -hmm. uh, through study, through group interaction, through conversation. Uh, we're going to tap into what that looks like uh, to pursue that calling. And a lot of it's also going to come back to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I haven't mentioned the Spirit very much mm -hmm. in this, um, but I believe um, the Spirit's critical to all these conversations um, and having a more Spirit-centered understanding of uh, what it means to, to flourish as human persons, mm -hmm. um, a, a pneumatic Christology, a Spirit uh, engrafted Christology, um, all those things will be topics for our discussion um, over the course of the year. Wonderful. I'd love to be in your class. <laughs> I may even make an appearance. Um, <laughs> Would love yeah, it. Yeah. Um, if you'd like to find out more about Krista, if you'd like to hear more about her courses and what's on offer this year at Kerry, then just come to our website www.kerry.ac.nz. <laughs> Ka kite anō. Thanks Krista. Absolutely. Mm.